So a few months ago, I got an inquiry to shoot a wedding at one of my dream venues. It's a venue that's been on my bucket list for many, many years. And I eventually met with the bride for a consult and we absolutely hit it off. But I didn't get my hopes up on closing this deal because A, she disclosed that she was interviewing others, which is totally fine. And B, as a practical matter of good salesmanship, you're not supposed to get emotionally attached to your prospects. If you're operating from a mindset of abundance, you're not wasting your time chasing after people who are not 100% interested in you, your products, or your services. The ideal situation here is that you create such an amazing brand, a product, or service, or experience that you attract people who are a thousand percent on board with you. And in these cases, they are chasing you instead. So you do your regular follow-ups, you do diligence and hope for the best. Basically, you do what you're supposed to do as a good business owner. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, that's okay too. You move on to the next. Anyway, this bride eventually gets back to me and she tells me that she is excited to move forward with the contracting process. Little does she know is that I am equally excited for me too. So the contract goes out and I don't hear back from her for like a week. When I finally hear back from the bride, her wedding planner had marked up my entire contract in red. And here's the thing, all the stuff that she marked up were industry standard stuff like my delivery times, my copyright release, and even my meals. And to top it all off, this planner was just outright nasty and mean. You should have seen the stuff that she was writing, making it look like I was some evil noob who didn't know what he was doing and just out there trying to steal everyone's money, right? Meanwhile, my 12 plus years of work history reads like a Carfax report. You just have to Google me and anything that you want to know about me, you can find. But I will save you guys a little bit of time. All my reviews are pretty much spotless. Well, anyway, come to find out this planner is new to the industry, which explains a lot. She had been working under a different planner for a number of years and was finally branching out on her own to do her own thing. That's great, good for her. I am genuinely happy for her. But what she didn't realize that now as a business owner herself is that your success in this industry or any industry out there comes down to all your relationships, not just with your paying clients, but also with the people that you work with. The quality of your brand, your products and your services, those things are important, but not as important as the relationships that you'll have to cultivate in this career. All right, it's always gonna come down to those relationships, both with your paying clients and your colleagues. And unfortunately for most folks, they only focus on the client side of things. And for some strange reason or other, they will go out of their way to step on other vendors in order to get their way. To accomplish what? And I think that's extremely short-sighted and unfortunate. Why would you throw another vendor under the bus to make yourself feel good, especially when that vendor did absolutely nothing wrong? You are cutting off your nose to spite your face. You might get your win today, but in the long term, it's not gonna look so good for you because nobody's gonna wanna work with you once they find out what a nasty, insufferable person you are. I'll be the first to admit that I have turned away work in the past when I find out that the couple has already hired so-and-so who just so happens to be a terrible, vile human being. Or maybe it's a terrible place to work at because I only have a limited number of weekends out there in the year that I can work. And I wanna spend them working with like-minded people who are professional and enjoyable to work with. Now I'll have to concede that I am in a very fortunate place in my career where I can give myself that option, where I don't have to take the jobs if I feel like it's not a good fit for me, especially if they're gonna make my life extremely difficult for the next 12 to 18 months. I don't need that in my life. By keeping this nonsense out of my life, it's no longer my circus, it's not my monkeys. Now, let me tell you guys another story. There's a well-known wedding photographer in my orbit who recently got married. Because believe it or not, we photographers do occasionally get married from time to time. And if you guys are watching this, you probably already know who I'm talking about, but I'm not gonna share her name with you because that's not what I do. But you probably don't have to dig very far to find out who I'm talking about. But the name here is irrelevant because what I'm about to share with you has been happening across our industry for a very long time. And I think there's an important lesson that we can all learn from it. So long story short, the bride is not happy with the services she was provided by one of her wedding vendors. And then she blasts this vendor all over social media and writes all these scathing reviews wherever she can find this vendor. I get it, you waited your entire life to marry the person of your dreams and you just want everything to be perfect. I get that part. Now, if this person was just the bride, then I can kind of see it from her perspective because she wouldn't know any better. But here's the thing, she is not just the bride. She also works full time in the industry. Now, because we are in the industry, whether we're photographers, florists, videographers, caterers, we've been doing this for any amount of time, we know that when we're dealing with all these moving parts and moving people, that a wedding day almost never unfolds as perfectly as you planned it. The guests run late, the video guy left one of his lenses at home, the photographer falls into a fountain. Whatever it is, shit happens. As professionals, we expect shit to happen. 
But if we can get the day to be 99% where we want it, that's actually pretty good. If we can get the flowers, the music, and the photos to hit 99% of the marks, that's pretty damn good. I mean, it doesn't mean that we're not trying to go for perfect every single time. I mean, that's why we have backups and backups for our backups. We build an extra buffer time into the schedule and we over deliver and we give back more than what the clients paid for. We know that we're not gonna get it perfect, but we know it's gonna be pretty damn close. But with that being said, here's where the plot thickens. Now, based on the evidence provided, this vendor did not screw up and definitely not in the manner in which it was described. I personally saw the photographic evidence of the work in question with my own two eyes. The work was flawless. Now, listen, I've got no dog in this fight, but I will speak up when I see bullying going on. Listen, it's tough enough to start a business in this day and age. Hell, it's fucking hard to run a business in this day and age, especially if you had to run a business these past few years in the middle of a global fucking pandemic and you're in the events industry, you know how hard it was, especially if this business was the one and only thing that you were doing to put food on a table and a roof over your head. This work is hard. Even on a good day, it's hard. Running a successful business is not easy. If you know this as a business owner yourself, why the hell would you go out of your way to make someone else's job harder than it needed to be, especially if they did nothing wrong? What is your end game? Having been in this industry for over 13 years, I can tell you this much. It's not gonna end the way that you think it's gonna end. And that's the lesson I wanna share with you guys today. Don't be a shitty person. Now, what's this got to do with sales and marketing, right? Well, let me tell you something. It's got a lot to do with sales and marketing because your reputation is everything in this line of work. The success of your business does not rely solely on the quality of your products and your services. Great vendors are a dime a dozen. Great photographers, florists, planners, DJs, cinematographers. You can find them anywhere at any price. The market is super saturated. You can find anything you want, anytime you want. So when you have a client who has to decide between, let's say, three crazy, super talented vendors, it's going to come down to the one they connected with the most. It's going to be the one that they like and trust the most. When that same client has the opportunity to refer their friends or their family, they can refer someone whom they love. No one's ever going to say, oh, this vendor is a total scumbag, but their work is amazing and you need to reach out to him or her. That scenario simply does not happen. Same goes for your industry colleagues. Referrals don't just come from clients. They also come from the people you work with. Presenting yourself as the most important person in a room instead of being a team player is not a good long-term business strategy because if you're a shitty person, nobody's gonna wanna work with you. You might get the client at the end of the day, but for the rest of your career, you're gonna have to work with lower tier vendors because they had no choice in the matter. Because if they did, they certainly wouldn't wanna put up with you and your nonsense. Now, if you don't ever wanna find yourself in that predicament where you might unwittingly put yourself and your reputation at risk, here's what you can do. The first thing is stay in your lane and just do good work. Don't interfere with other people's businesses. If other people are running their businesses poorly, that's their business, not yours. Just let your good work speak for itself. And if you're always coming from a place of service, of kindness, empathy, and compassion, you'll never have to worry about other people tarnishing your good name. Because at the end of the day, you'll have nothing to hide. And you'll have legions of fans and friends and clients who will stand up for you. You'll never have to worry about any of that because you've always done the right thing and approached everything in life and in business in good faith. And in my stories, at least, the good guys always win at the end. The second thing is, if you want to build the tallest building in town, then go ahead and build the tallest building in town. Don't tear down other people's buildings just to make yours seem like it's a little taller. People see through all that nonsense. Your clients see through all that nonsense. Your peers for sure see through all that nonsense. Now there's an industry group that I belong to called the Rising Tide Society, where there's a belief that rising tides raise all ships. As industry professionals, we are all in this together. We help each other succeed, not break each other down. Because if I win, that doesn't mean that you have to lose. We can both win if we work together. Which brings me to my last and final point. Now that we've got all this kumbaya stuff out of the way, this tip is the most important. You don't shit where you eat. I get it, sometimes life doesn't go exactly as you planned it. I know you just need to vent and you need an outlet for your frustration. Life didn't meet your expectations, but for crying out loud, don't take it out on others, especially if they're innocent. In that interaction, you both lose. In fact, you might lose even more. At the end of the day, we as business owners, we just wanna do a good job for our clients. Do what we love and make enough money to feed our families and put a roof over our heads. I can tell you from my own personal interactions with hundreds upon hundreds of fellow industry colleagues that 99% of us are operating in good faith. We want our clients to be happy. We want our colleagues to be happy. We want to be happy. We are not out there trying to screw people over. The other takeaway I want you guys to leave with today is that this industry is tiny. Everyone talks. Everyone knows everyone's business. 
So this is your friendly reminder to not be a shitty person. While the drama might be exciting for some folks to watch, you're really ruining the party for everyone. Don't punch down on people. Punching down on people requires you to think less of them. And if you're operating from that mindset, you're already doing everything wrong. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope that you guys learned a little bit more today about not just about being a better business owner, but about being a better person. Because at the end of the day, those two things go hand in hand. Be the kind of person that people want to be around. Because if they love you, they are going to love what your business can do for them. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you enjoyed it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Invite your friends to the party. On that note, thank you guys all so much for watching. And I will see you guys on the next one.